Welcome to part 5 of my Windows Server 2025 training series. Today is a little exciting because we're going to actually install Windows Server Core. And with Server Core, we're actually going to implement a secondary domain controller. So let's jump right into it. So, what is Server Core? Really all Server Core is, it's a minimal installation option that's presented to you when you're installing Windows Server. The primary thing to note with Core is it does not have a desktop interface. It's instead designed to be managed remotely, primarily through RSAT, so Remote Server Administration Tools, PowerShell, or you can also use the newer Windows Admin Center. The key benefits include performance, CPU and RAM is going to be much lower than the utilization. Required disk space is also going to be less than a typical server installation with the desktop environment. There's also the potential for reduced management, less is installed, so that's going to mean there's less to maintain and there's also going to be less that you're potentially going to have to troubleshoot since there's less of an overhead with core. In our lab today, our host name for our new virtual machine is going to be gt-dc2. We're also going to be using a new network, this 192.168.106.24. We're just going to be using this network to simulate a different site location. The IP address we'll be using is 192.168.106.200. And what we'll actually be doing is we're going to install Server Core 2025 on a new virtual machine. We're going to configure network settings for the new VM and domain join it. And after that, we're going to install ADDS and configure the VM as our secondary DC. All right, so let's hop right over to our host server. You see our previously created domain controller here. We're going to create our new virtual machine. And we're going to click Next. We're going to call this our gt-dc2. Next, we want it to be Gen 2 for assigned memory. Let's go ahead and leave this at 2048 because we're going to need less resources. And we're going to connect to our external vSwitch. For our new hard drive, we're going to do 60 gigs this time because we're going to need a little less space, but we want to have a little bit of wiggle room in case we add anything else in some later lessons. We're going to mount our ISO, the server 2025, and we're going to finish. And we're actually going to do one more step here. We're going to shrink our virtual processor. We're going to get that down to one. And also, because my network is tagged with VLAN 106, so we can use this new network, I'm just going to assign that tag here so the vSwitch knows to use that VLAN tag. And we're going to start it up. And if you recall, you do have to press any key to boot to Windows. So you probably heard me smashing a couple of keys, trying to hit it as fast as I could. And as soon as this loads up, we're going to start our install. Alright, so we're going to click Next and Next. We want to install. Yes, we agree that everything will be deleted. This is a fresh install. And this time we're just going to do standard. And we're going to make sure it has the option we want. So it omits most of the Windows graphical environment. So this is going to be our server core installation. And we're just going to click next and accept. And we should see our 60 gig disk. And we officially started our install. We'll pick right back up as soon as this is completed. Now that our server core installation is finished, the first thing that you're going to notice is it's prompting us to change our administrator password. So because we do not have a graphical user interface, since we did not install the desktop environment, we're going to set up this server using entirely command prompt and PowerShell commands. But this is baked into the logon UI, so let's go ahead and proceed with that password reset. All right, so we have our new password. Should take just a moment and we're good. All right. So you'll notice it's gonna load a command prompt for us. And 
And for diagnostic data, we're just going to say required. And one of the primary tools that you use to configure server core is sconfig. You can see that it immediately started up for us right after the install, because it basically assumes that you're going to get right to configuring everything that you need. So sconfig stands for server config. And if you see all of our options here, we have domain workgroup, which we won't be using quite yet. Uh, next, we have computer name. So we're actually going to select this. And we want to go ahead and assign our name as gt-dc2. And it's going to prompt for a restart. And we'll continue the setup as soon as this is rebooted. With that reboot out of the way, we're going to continue going down our list. We see we already have a local administrator account. We don't need to add another one currently. Remote management is also enabled. For update settings, we're going to select 5. And we're going to do manual because we do not want anything to automatically update currently. So we're going to update for now because we know there's not any updates that are going to break anything. And we're going to say all quality updates. And we're going to go ahead and run through these updates. Now that we've fast forwarded through all of our updates and we have those installed and rebooted, we're going to go ahead and modify our network settings. So my current network, I do have DHCP enabled on this VLAN. So that's why I already have that address that's pulled. We were able to install updates, but we're going to go ahead and change this. And we're going to set our network adapter address. We're going to pick number one. As for static, we're going to do 192.168.106.200. Subnet mask, we're going to leave it blank because we do have a slash 24. Default gateway, 106.1. And we're good there. So now we're going to set our DNS servers. And since we actually need to find our domain, we're going to go ahead and just add our domain controller. And we'll leave these blank for now. All right, perfect. So now that all of our network settings have been set, let's go to domain work group. So we're going to pick option one. And we're going to say domain. And we're going to do ad.greentech.org to match our domain name. And we're going to do our DAC green account. And we've joined the domain. So let's go ahead and reboot. And it'll take a little bit longer for this to come back up because it is going to apply all the domain settings. But the silver lining is this being server core, it's actually much faster than that desktop environment. So now at this point, we have a name assigned to our server, we have the correct network settings, and we've also joined it to the domain. So we're ready to install domain controller services. But to do that, we have to hop back to our original domain controller. We're going to open the server manager. And from this main screen here, you're going to see add other servers to manage. And we're going to do gtdc2, and it should pick it up almost immediately. Awesome. And we're going to click OK. And in just a moment, we're going to see it appear. Perfect. So we have it in all servers. So now that it's listed, we can just go here, add roles and features. We can click Next, role-based or feature-based installation. There's our DC2. So it's right here. So we're going to click it, click Next. We're going to do Active Directory Domain Services. And next, next again, and we had this prompt last time. It's just confirming what ADDS is, what's going to be installed, etc. And we're going to restart the server automatically when required. So we're going to let this install and we're going to pick up as soon as it's finalized. Once you see that role finished up, you're going to see a little 
hyperlink here that says promote this server to a domain controller. Let's go ahead and click that. And we're going to add a domain controller to an existing domain since we already have our ad.greentech.org. And we have to supply domain admin credentials. Once you supply those, click next. And we will be doing a typical domain controller. So DNS is going to be enabled. It's going to be a global catalog. We're not doing a read only domain controller currently. So we're going to leave that unchecked. The site name is just going to be default first site name. We're going to change that a little later on. And here's where you want to create a secure password for that directory services restore mode. And this can be anything you want, but I highly recommend that you store it in a password manager or somewhere that you're not going to lose it. This will come in handy if you ever have to do any active directory restorations later on. It's rare, but it can definitely happen. All right, so now that we have this set up, we don't have to check install for media. It says replicate from any domain controller. We're just going to specify GTDC1. Doesn't really matter, but I'd like to see it there. Paths, everything's going to be default. We're going to review our options. Make sure everything looks good. Global catalog, DNS, source, everything looks great. So we're going to wrap up and click install. This is also going to take a little bit, so we're going to pause and resume as soon as it's ready for the next step. All right, our domain controller is successfully set up. So you will see a little warning message about delegation for this DNS server cannot be created, blah, blah, blah. So this is actually totally normal with a new domain. Don't have anything to worry about here. It's more of an informational message. But that covers it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to go over DNS and some best practices, how to get things configured, and kind of how everything works together. But I'd like to thank you for watching, and I hope you follow me in the next lesson.